Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday, and even though we're running a little bit late, we've got a great show for you. Sean Spears is back. Tony D'Angelo is in control of everything, and today I'm going to ask Glenn, who's the bad guy here? But before <laughs> we get started, my name is Jack. Of course, I'm being joined by Glenn. We're going to cover NXT. Glenn, how you feeling today on this fine Tuesday? I am in a state of shock because I did not, I, we talked about, is it Dante Chen? Who is it that's going to be this character that we've seen these vignettes for? And when Sean Spears showed up tonight, I audibly said, holy S, um, nobody guessed this. Nobody thought this. And he's not Ty Dillinger, maybe still a perfect 10. But Sean Spears, the former chairman of AEW, is back. Cody Rhodes, do not call him a good hand or say he's I a mean, player coach. Uh, he is, uh, I am absolutely shocked by that i am very excited about that i'm a big sean spears fan we'll absolutely discuss a lot more of that uh, as we get to that segment um we gotta we gotta jump into some news here though as, as you guys know here we like to start with news as everyone settles in and finds their seats and what i recommend everyone do while we're talking about the news is let us know what you think about the news but also hit the like button share comment subscribe all that good stuff that happens over there uh Someone who also has apparently signed with WWE that's not a chairman is uh, Tama Tonga, uh, apparently leaving New Japan Pro Wrestling, making his way over to uh, WWE. Could be NXT, could be SmackDown, could be Raw. I got a feeling it's going to be NXT. But uh, Glenn, how do you feel about this signing? I think it's very exciting. He's done great stuff in New Japan. He's, uh, you know, Bullet Club, Gorillas of Destiny great in the ring, good character work. I think this could be good. And Meltzer reported on this and said, you know, through his adoptive father, he's uh, considered part of the Onai family. So maybe there's some bloodline. I mean, at this point, who is here? it? It's, who it's is kind it? of becoming like NWO, NWO, Wolfpack. You know, they're all, they're all a part of it. Everyone. Um, Beer money asking who's see you soon from the beach. We're going to talk about that. I got oh, a yeah. feeling it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's not Tonga, but, uh, yeah, we, um, we got a big show that I'm, I'm really excited about Tom signing with, uh, WWE. I got a feeling he's going to go the more traditional route. Got a feeling he's going to go through NXT. I, I think it's good that everyone goes through NXT. I feel like what NXT is doing right now, worst case scenario let's say they're way beyond the need to be an NXT. I feel like um, then they get to just like make other people look great while they're there. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they do need to sort of adjust a little bit, that's a great place to adjust. If people don't know who these characters are, cause I'm sure a lot of people don't know who he is. Yeah. I think it's going to be a great place for people to learn who he is and go, wow, this guy's great. What a great signing. Uh, but I think he looks the part. He wrestles the part. Uh, I think he's, your prototypical uh, WWE signing in all the best ways, personally. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm excited for it, man. It's, I mean, WWE, it's an exciting time right now, especially it, for NXT. It really, really is. And um, uh, speaking of exciting times in WWE, a lot of cool stuff is happening with uh, WrestleMania coming up right around the corner. 39 days, as they reminded us many times today. Um it looks like a few matches have been confirmed already. Rhea Ripley defending against Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins defending against Drew McIntyre. Of course, it definitely appears that Cody Rhodes will be challenging Roman Reigns. Um, what else should we expect? Uh, Meltzer says that two grudge matches are set to be added. Uh, AJ Styles versus LA Knight and Randy Orton versus Logan Paul. Um how, we have, we don't get a chance to talk about main roster stuff too often, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, we our, our ships pass in the night, and we don't get to really uh, chatter about this too much. But we said it a little bit last night on Raw. It's crazy if I was to tell you the injuries, the unavailable people uh, that were going to be on the roster. I think any other year you would say WWE is devastated for WrestleMania this mm. year. But even with CM Punk being out and uh, all the other stuff going on, it feels like they they still don't have enough places for everybody. No. This is a lot of huge names, and I'm yeah. still like, well, who else? Is, who's Gunther going to face? Who's Sami Zayn going to face? Who's like maybe each other? People. I mean, that might be the case. But how, how are you feeling about the build so far? I mean, 
I counted it and tweeted it the other day. I think there's something like 12, 13 matches. And if you look at years past, it's probably going to be a 16 match card but spread over two nights. Mm-hmm. So it's getting pretty full, you know, and that's including like pre-show stuff. So I think, um, you know, for the talent and the talent is probably, yeah, right. But I could see Triple H being, you know, SmackDown is really like the third night of WrestleMania. It's like, the yeah. You know, so well, I mean, that's where Andre the Giant Battle Royale goes down. So I feel like it's part of it. I think you. I think people are going to be shocked by some of the matches that we see Friday before Hall of Fame going into Mania. I mean, and it's. I always feel bad because WWE are, are in a very interesting spot now, where there's going to be a lot of people like, I can't believe this isn't on WrestleMania. But like, this is one of those few years where like, there's just only so much time, even in two nights, that you have. For some of these people, someone like a Bobby Lashley may miss WrestleMania again because, yeah. sorry, there's just too much stuff. Because, I mean, all these names were saying that's only the men's division. We're not even talking about all the stuff that could happen with like Bailey and EO and, um, of course, Becky and Rhea. And then there's the tag team championships. Just so much stuff that could happen there that, I, I mean, that's just a stacked roster. It's this might be the most stacked it's ever been, depending on the contenders. Now, some people are assuming Bianca versus Jade will happen as a one-on-one. Other people have said maybe they form a tag team and take on the Kabuki Warriors. If it's Bianca and Jade versus the Kabuki Warriors, that's definitely a prime spot Saturday or Sunday. If they don't have a good contender, and I, and I hate to say this, I could see that match being on Friday uh, on SmackDown because there's just no ob- obvious number one contender for the Women's Tag Team Championships right now that I think is going to be that that you would even suspend disbelief and say they have a chance to win. I mean, well, that's uh someone or we had talked about last night, uh, possibly Jade Cargill versus Nia Jax in kind of a quick that could be Brock cool. Lesnar Omos style match. Uh, where yeah. Jade can go in there and show that she's powerful enough to take on Nia Jax, get in, get out, be a spectacle, and move on. Um, that could be something, but then of course, what do you do with Bianca Belair? Bianca Belair's got to be on the show, yeah. Yeah, to your point, like it's crazy. It's just it's insane that when they moved it to two nights, it was very much like, well, how are they going to fill two nights? What are they going to do now? I'm just like, are they going to have to make this three nights? I, like you said, I guess SmackDown, and that's not even counting, of course, Stand and Deliver, which is going to steal the show, and that's in the morning, which is crazy yeah. when you think about that. That it's like you do Friday and then Saturday morning, and then I mean, it's just. It's not some, I don't know. I mean, you know who really um, gets hurt by this is all of the indie shows that run in the Mania City because now it's just where is the, where's there that gap? Like maybe if you're doing, you know, a midnight, late night indie show, people have energy for that, the hardcore, but it's like there's not a lot of free time or gaps to fill. And now with the WrestleMania world happening as well, which by the way, kind of weird how much they're hyping that. It's, it sounds yeah. a lot like access. It's just access. Yeah. I think I think that's what's going to be is they just, but that's that's marketing. You take something yeah. you already have, you rebrand it, and a whole new experience. It's a whole new experience. You know, podcast yeah. recordings. That's uh, I mean, that's that's pizza, right? Like they've been doing that. Oh, like Domino's every three months has this new like we've got the new super system to give you the greatest pizza ever. It's uh, still it's, pizza, it, man. It's stale bread with. It, sauce and cheese on it i mean your your dominoes like what do you like what do you i know you're not doing anything fancy over there come that's on that's what i like about little caesars there is no pretense they're like we give you two pizzas that's our gimmick enjoy yeah you get two what do you want from me <laughs> yeah. that's it pizza pizza that's a, <laughs> our marketing is just like pizza pizza you get two there's a little roman guy i don't know a little caesar guy <laughs> It's incredible. And in the, you know what's weird, though, about Little Caesars? In the state of Michigan, I swear it tastes better. Little Caesars, it's like a Michigan, like it's it's part of like uh, the culture in Michigan. I swear mm-hmm. it tastes better in Michigan. Maybe it's the water, maybe something. If we have anyone from Michigan or who has had Little Caesars in Michigan in the chat, I need you to verify Glenn's Glenn's commentary here. I actually have a quick question before you get we get into yeah, the show yeah. because uh, the NXT after show, I feel like, is to go off the rails and talk about things that are just random. Sure. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt Kuhn, a co-host of the uh, Raw after show, said something on Twitter, and it, it's just rattled me. I, I okay. argued with him about it last night, but it's it struck me to my core. He says, I can barely say this without just getting riled up. 
pancakes are better than waffles. Do you agree? This is a really tough one. Here's the thing about pancakes versus waffles. Pancakes, you can eat a stack of them. They're 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 spongy and and they get this nice little um uh they they pancakes are really cake. It's really cake when you stack them a bunch and you get this nice layered effect, right? And you like put your fork in and everything in the syrup and it all comes together. It's lovely. Waffles like I'll take two waffles side by side, but it's a night and day difference between them. Both good. Yeah. But I don't know. There's something beautiful about the pancake. No, it's waffles. It's waffles is the answer. Look, I'll tell you, like, first off, whenever was, I always say, whenever anyone talks about the pancake and how great it is, what they're really talking about is the stuff they put on the pancake that the pancake absorbs. So they're mm. like, oh, yeah, I put a bunch of syrup on it and it's delicious. No, you like the syrup. You don't like the pancake. But Jack, if you just had them, eating dry waffles. If you ate them plain, the waffle wins. And then if you add stuff, the waffle, it's convenient. It's modern. It's futuristic. It's like, we're going to put little cups all across oh, it. So I like it just, it holds all this you know together you, you could strap them to your feet and walk in the snow yeah you you know what let, let me tell you this waffles help to create nike so I, I think that they've got a little bit of a resume builder there what pancakes ever do now i'm gonna let me let me throw you a curve and tell you what's superior to both of them french well, french toast wins yeah french toast yeah. wins yeah, that's like French, French, French. French. It's like when we have that argument of like who's the who's the the, the biggest wrestler in the world right now. I mean, you got to put Roman Reigns to the side. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah, he's obviously the guy, but who who like who's next? You know. Yeah. Um, but uh, all all breakfast bread items have their place. That's that's my uh, diplomatic answer. <laughs> they all have a place uh, and a time. Well, uh, Source Jedi says pancakes for the people. Um, Ricky and, and, says pancakes are easy to make. Well, they are easier to make. I will say that. Um, most of the pancakes I make go in the toaster. So. <laughs> um, Jack's basically uh, a child. Is is what well, he lives his life like a latchkey kid. Oh, dude, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I I will have an Oreo <laughs> dinner any day if I can. Uh, but uh, yeah, PB and J made with waffles is great. Oh, that's a that's a delicious idea. Um, let's, let's get into the show. Okay. Though. Now, now you got uh, me thinking about this. Yeah, um, okay, well, let's, let's do uh, it. Of course, as always, everyone, uh, who's joining us, like, comment, share, subscribe, everyone in the chat. want to say thank you to Alicia, Killer of Demons, J.R. Smith, Bigfoot Sneakerhead, Sammy Diaz, Chris Bricks, Daniel Barry, Ricky Zaldivar, Miguel Ortiz, Lulu Armel, Brian Reyes, Killer of Demons, Josh Alston, uh baby ice peter p stalking you with a little doggy emoji cleveland rocks pepita jr source yes. jedi uh chad w uh and everyone else appreciate you being here and also and beer money i don't think i shouted out beer money uh if you're one of the lurkers here what well, am shout out to my lurkers like christopher here who's just lurking i always appreciate the lurkers just hanging out here and uh and being a part of the show, you guys are still appreciated as well. Um, Let me give a shout out to the waffle cone. The waffle, oh, cone waffle cone is a work of art. You know, this is where there's a certain level of laziness I have, Glenn. And the waffle cone is the uh, perfect example of it because I love the waffle cone so much. But I've become I've gotten to that age where I'm like, put the ice cream in the in in the cup, but then put the waffle cone on top because I want my it. cake and eat it too. I don't I want to be able to. <laughs> I don't want it to drip all over the sides, but I still want my waffle cone. I'm you. The older I get, the more I appreciate the cone part of an ice cream cone. Like, yeah. I can just eat a cone. No ice cream. Oh, They're yeah. very tasty. The cone, the cone is delicious. Cone's you know what I won't eat, though? Huh. A pancake cone. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Actually, let me, let me just say one last thing before we move on. So we did this. I love corn dogs. And for vegan yeah. corn dogs, like Morningstar Farms makes a great one. You just microwave it. It actually tastes just like the, the corn dogs you remember as a kid. For a while, I was making cornbread pancakes, just thin Ooh. little cornbread. I was mixing can uh, pancake batter with uh, some cornbread mix. I was just doing that and just rolling up my veggie hot dog in the cornbread pancake and eating that. That was delightful. Oh, that's so good. Corn dogs. What's great about corn dogs is there's a level of expectation and it's very it's a very easy bar to clear oh my god dog. it's like amazing. you're never like well this isn't a very good corn dog <laughs> no like, this is the corn dog 
I'm, I'm getting what hard to mess for. up. Hard to mess yeah. up. Okay. But NXT, we should talk about. Yes. Although, look I, for our new uh, podcast, which will just be entirely about uh, you, your parents are working late and you have to feed yourself. And what do you make? Uh, and you pocket that money to go buy baseball cards uh, and, you know, go eat at a friend's house. Because I got stories about that for days. Um, yeah. So, NXT tonight, a delightful show. Sean Spears is back. Yeah. Do you want to take the reins? The, no, you, take you the do it, reins? man. You do it. You, you, take, you take notes, man. Well, we can't let well, that go to waste. Well, I'm going to start a little differently. I'm going to start with Kehlani Jordan and Kiana James. Because our opening yeah. segment led to the closing segment. And I don't want us jumping okay. all over the place. So, Kehlani Jordan takes on Kiana James. Kehlani Jordan looks like she could have the upper hand. But Izzy Dame helps Kiana James out. And eventually, uh, Kiana James gets the win. Uh my qu first off, thoughts on the match, obviously, thoughts on these two. My one gripe with NXT, I got to give you my gripe. Some of these names are so similar. Kehlani Jordan, Kiana James, it's it's kind of tricky to get some of these names right. Am I? Is that a fair critique? Yeah, I feel like NXT sometimes goes with something really simple. It's just easy. Uh, and then other times, it's just it's maybe a syllable where it doesn't quite roll as easily, but mm -hmm. I, I like both names. I think both names are good. It's just kind of weird that we ended up with uh, KJ versus KJ. See, Izzy Dame. Izzy Dame is a great, simple name. Yes. yes. And I was, because I-Z-Z-I. -Z -Z -I. Izzy and if, if Izzy Dame is facing Kehlani Jordan, it's very easy, but Kehlani Jordan, Kiana James is a very, they're just very same -Z. And so it's very, it, this was a tough one to... I'd imagine the call for Vic Joseph and Booker T because just the naming and getting the names right felt very difficult to oh, me. But I thought at any point they were going to announce Kevin James was there. I mean, yes, it just it was very much a tongue twister. Uh, are they missing the boat with Kaylani Jordan? I feel like I think so. everyone loves her. I feel like she's great. I feel like she loses a lot and doesn't have a lot of direction, though. She is immensely likable. And I think that with Kiana James, they are dropping the ball on her doing business lady stuff because I think that's, it, you know, tonight with Tony D'Angelo, not to jump out with Tony D'Angelo, we've been getting back to the roots of what made Tony D'Angelo a breakout star of NXT 2.0. Kiana James uh, through, she was going to buy Fallon Henley's bar. Uh, the stuff with Sebastian, like Kiana James, I think used to do a lot more character work. And now, she settled into uh, she's friends with Izzy Dame. She's doing fights uh, and matches, but I'd like to see, I think she's a very good character. And I think NXT is always, always shines when they lean into that. Uh, let, let me ask you about that. Cause I, I want to follow up on that comment, uh, but let me just ask about the pairing of Kiana James and Izzy Dame, because I was thinking about this. It's, it's really not the most innovative pairing. You've got yeah. the, the person that's wrestling and then the big powerhouse that helps them win. Uh, but it feels like it's working from an in-ring standpoint. Do you like the pairing on paper or uh, do you not like, does this feel a little generic to you? Um, I It didn't work for me at first, but I feel like it's going okay, but it's going to go better when Izzy Dame gets sick of her crap and then they have a feud. I mean, I feel like that's very much, like I said, it's not the most original, innovative idea, but no. that plan seems to work in most cases. So oh, I mean, that's, yeah, wrestling 101, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, Majestic Marie, shout oh. out, uh, says, Jack and Glenn, we don't deserve this much positivity in one place. Yeah, we like to gush over NXT. This is NXT's usually, like, so good. I mean, uh, as opposed to, like, some of the other shows where it's, like, ah, it's tough to, you know, you, like, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta fight some folks to make it positive. I was surprised tonight. I was entertained tonight, and I swear in that main event when Tony D was doing his thing, like I was just smiling. I was glowing. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm so excited to talk about that. That is going to be that. That absolutely was the best part of, of the night. Uh, but I do. You mentioned Kiana James being a little bit more business savvy. And Thea Hale had a, a segment backstage where uh, she was talking about how Riley didn't like her because she was wasn't the same Thea Hale that he thought she was going to be. And JC Jane calls Thea a loser. And then as they're doing that, that's when Kiana James shows up and is like, Hey, you sold a lot of, uh, sold a lot of calendars. How <laughs> yes. did you do that? And I actually was thinking, are we going to get a little corporate conglomerate of these female wrestlers in NXT? I feel like there's some business minds that are <laughs> happening there. 
I think if this was a year ago, no, if they wouldn't have gone that direction, it, it's a little weird. It's a little weird, I think, to because notice with the Chase U thing, they were just like, oh, those calendars sold out four times. Let's not talk about that anymore because people said at the time, like the timing after the Vince lawsuit and everything, they were like, this seems a little just not yeah. related, but just kind of poor timing to talk about this this calendar, which is very antiquated, uh, somewhat antiquated. Well, that you have a calendar is antiquated, people. It's 2024 yeah. ones. Last time you bought a paper calendar. So they reference this, but they're not leaning into it. But I think that what you're talking about now would be kind of strange. Um, just given the state of things. That being said, Alicia Ace things wanted to give Thea a hug. Here's the deal. And I, I'm, I'm almost positive you had the same reaction. I'm going to be 48 years old in a week. Mm -hmm. I look at Thea Happy Hale. Birthday. Thank you. Uh, uh, I look at Thea Hale and I saw Jason talking to her and I just, I just, I want to give the kid a pep talk be like, you don't let anybody tell you, you know, what your worth is. You need to just go back to what was working. You're great in the ring. Like, like I felt for, you, you could see the disappointment. She just looked so sad and shook by JC going negative on her and talking about who she used to be. And I think this is going to be great because what's going to happen is, um, we're going to get the old Thea. She's going to drink a rain energy, her energy drink of choice. Uh, she could drink a rain energy and we're going to get old Thea Hale back and we're going to get probably Thea versus JC at stand and deliver. And I think I, I look, I, I get the stuff with uh, the guy she likes, but I have not been a fan of Thea being in this role of like, Oh, I want this boy to like me. Thea's a great wrestler. She's a great character and a lot of energy, but there was, this has been a long journey to this wrestling match with her and JC Jane, where she's been in this relationship angle that I don't, that I think stunted some of the momentum she had previously that she was starting to get uh, with singles matches before, you know? So I'm glad that, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel on this. Uh, you know, I actually think that this is going to pay off big though. Cause I agree. Yeah. I'm ready for old Thea Hale back, but I think the weight and the way she's going through this is going to make it when it happens feel so much better than if they gave it to us earlier. So like, like I got it. Like I agree with you, man. When when Thea Hale, I said this on Twitter. When she said a loser, seriously, like my heart broke for her. I was I yeah. felt so bad for her uh, in that moment. And that moment right there, like if she comes back to that being that old Thea Hale, and she gets back in that ring, and she beats up J.C. Jane, I'm gonna be so excited about it. I'm gonna be so pumped oh. for it. I'm gonna be like, yay! She's like, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll like, go one it, further. I'll go one further, it. Jack. If she first yells at jc and says i like who i am and you don't dictate this i will cry i, I will like not just get missy i will sit there and i will just sob openly to watch thea assert herself against the bully i would love to see and, that and that would be such a great story to see as well and it'd, it'd be it'd be kind of cool too if uh you know riley was like yeah this is the thea hale i like and she was like it, i don't it doesn't matter if you like me either it's i like me you know yeah. maybe even give them that little kind of that story for her as well. Cause I agree. That'd be such a great feel good story. And you know, you want to say wrestling's supposed to make you feel something. And this is absolutely something you feel and they haven't even gotten in the ring yet. And if Thea is able to put away JC Jane, man, Huge. this is going to be well, like that, that yeah. might be, that will be in my top three pops of WrestleMania weekend. If Thea hell, Gets that triumphant yeah. victory over JC Jane and stand and deliver. This is also my top uh, three pops will be if Tony D'Angelo wins the NXT championship. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I guess the thing with the Hale beating JC Jane, and this will be our last thing on it, is um, if she, because I think so as wrestling fans, especially those of us that have watched wrestling for a long time, we get into like what's supposed to happen and yeah. like the book, best booking, and like, well, if Cody Rhodes loses then roman reigns can have the title for this long so it'll be that great and like you lose the like the thing of it but like with thea hale i'm not thinking about what booking should be or what's supposed to happen or anything like that i'm just like i really want her to win and i really want her to feel better about herself and like that's the feeling that wrestling is all about and i think that that's as fans if you can get us fans especially guys like us glenn that like talk oh, about yeah. this and analyze it and break it down so much to feel that man and, great, and let me just let me just stuff. put her over even more tonight with what Thea did. Thea tonight acted with her eyes and her expression mm -hmm. and told us, and, and the words she said, she didn't say very much, but the words she did say held such weight to them. 
this i mean she was legitimately tonight incredibly moving just now she was reacting to what jc said that when she did speak it was very powerful she's a very, very good actress very a plus stuff she has a very bright career in front of her especially since she's like 20 21 she's so yeah. young too it's crazy yeah. um so we had at one point the good brothers versus uh idris Inofe and malik blade pretty cool match but it's basically one level above a squash so that we could remember how good the oc is uh post-match chase you want to take a moment to teach Frazier and Axiom won a piece of the action. So does the LWO and the Good Brothers are, or um, they all want to have the Good Brothers, but the champs are looking on. Later, the OC give the champs a hard time and threaten to take the titles. Uh, what I really liked about this whole segment is, and this is where NXT is so good, is they remind us who the, the Good Brothers are. They remind us that they're dominant. They show us that they're someone we should fear but they remind us of all the teams in that division. And they remind us, by the way, these are the champions. So if you're kind of new to NXT, or if you're just not good at remembering what's going on, or you're one of those people that goes like, but where have the LWO been or whatever? Like they're kind of reminding you, yeah. by the way, this is, this is the playing field. And I think that it was fun, but it was also informative. If that makes sense. No, Absolutely. And uh, I think it's good. I'm curious to see what they do now back in NXT. It's interesting, though. Are they there to give the Wolf Dogs a big challenge for Stand and Deliver weekend? Or do we get perhaps a four-way tag match and involve Chase U and a no fan blade as well? Or perhaps Gallus? Well, that's the tricky thing because there was five teams out there, really, yeah. right? There was OC, yeah, perhaps uh, LWO, Chase. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of a lot of folks in that situation, and I don't know how long the OC is going to be in NXT. Uh, I feel like they're kind of at a place where they could theoretically be in NXT for a very long time. I, they're they don't really have breaking up with AJ. Roster. No, I mean, and Mia. Oh, please let them give Mia something of substance on the main roster now. Um, I'm a big believer and they got to call her Mia again. I feel like Michin just isn't clicking for me. Never has. Uh, um, but so this is, I'm going to ask this question again. I've asked it yeah. before. I'm going to bring it back. Are they missing the boat with Idris Inofe and Malik Blade? Do you believe that this is a team <sighs> that needs to be utilized better? It's tough right now for a lot of the tag teams. Cause look at what they did with Gallus. Look what they did with OTM. I think that, Clearly, they're very invested in Braun Breaker, which isn't to say they don't care about Baron Corbin, but the Wolf Dogs, though, need to be dominant and strong, or they need to figure out the most graceful way to keep them looking strong while getting those titles off them. So I think that I think it's going to be tough for any tag team for through at least uh, Mania Weekend right now in NXT. I am a huge believer in Idris and Malik. I feel like they're entertaining. Like they can be funny. They have great matches. Their ring gear, we got to give some respect to their ring gear. They're I feel like tonight. they have new ring gear that's incredible every time they come out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so this is just me saying, world, I want you to give those guys more time because I feel like they are, they check every single box uh, that yeah. you could ask for. Um, and I think, I think they're going to, I think they're going to, they're going to get, they're going to blow up at some point. I think they're going to be one of those teams that blows up and everyone's going to go, where have these guys been all this time? And we're going to make, well, they've been here for a while, <laughs> but, uh, but I think they're going to blow up soon. Uh, we had some quick, quick moments here. Uh, actually, uh, and on Twitter, I actually asked about it. I asked people if they, uh, if they thought it was a, uh, a team and someone said, let me pull it up here real quick. Um, I was supposed to have this ready. I am not prepared, Glenn, okay. but I, I do want to shout out uh, one of the people who said something, and this is me just killing time while I'm just going. Uh, at uh, Rene De, uh, Dale, I, at Ren D A L E, I'm saying that wrong, probably says, uh, I've always liked them. They came so close to winning those tiles before, extremely talented. So I wanted yeah. to give a shout out to uh, getting some of that engagement going. <laughs> uh, Oba Femi. Uh, he had an interesting night. He says he just wants to know who his next match is going to be against. Has a little stare down with Dragunov. But then Brooks later comes out and has some words for Obafemi. 
Glenn, I want to know what your reaction would be if you were just like getting off work, heading out to your car, and some random person said, my friend says I need to grow balls. I want to fight you. <laughs> what would you say? I'd be like, uh, sir, how, how how can we defuse this situation? Yeah, it would be it would be weird. <laughs> it would be super weird, you know? <laughs> like, I, I, I get it from a, like, in the world of wrestling, it makes sense. But I was thinking, like, in the real in real life, you'd be like, dude, this sounds like a you problem. I don't know what. I, oh yeah. I do any of this? What, you and your balls? What? What? Uh, yeah. Uh, I I got some fantasy booking for Obama. Uh, uh, Obama. Oba Femi. <laughs> Oba Femi. Uh, Obama's the new signing to NXT, by the way. <laughs> no, um, Oba Femi. Uh, I don't want to jump ahead. I got a feeling though. I got a feeling that Dragonoff's going to be without a title soon. Yeah. And I got a feeling Obafemi versus Dragonoff is going to happen for that title. And I have a feeling after a couple of losses, Dragonoff's headed to uh, a red or blue brand. That's my prediction. Yeah. No, I think it's about time, right? Um, yeah. I, I, I always say, especially in NXT, you got to do the lose tour before you head up, usually. Like, usually you, you look dominant and then you got to sort of go out on your back as they say a couple times i feel like that's going to be dragon uh farewell to her uh, yeah we'll before, see before heading up but i'm a big oba femi fan so i'd like to see that um this is where i start my who's the bad guy pitch jakara jackson faces roxanne perez uh, first, Jakara gives Perez a little sass for getting angry about missing the opportunity last week. Uh, then Lash tries to, uh, during the match, Lash tries to help Jakara, gets ejected, and Roxanne gets the win. I get everything about how this was put together, but Glenn, who's the bad guy here? I mean, with Roxanne, they're trying to make her heelish i mean this is an anti-hero territory they're making it seem like she's just frustrated and at her breaking point but it's actually it's interesting to me like um that even with that she is getting a win because usually when someone is like distraught over something it's normally not a formula for winning matches right it's, you know it's very yeah i do feel like you're not going to get people booing roxanne perez no. you're just you're just not she's she's too lovable uh and it's weird, especially when you have someone like Jakara Jackson, who's clearly a bad guy in this situation, and even wrestling like a bad guy in this situation, having help on the outside, yeah, uh, and has been established as a bad guy. It makes it hard, even harder for me to boo Roxanne Perez, especially as she's overcoming the double teams and stuff, but then being, a, I, I don't know, it was, I get why again. I get why it happened. I get you got to have matches, but this one was a little weird to me. If we're working really hard to make Roxanne Perez someone we're not supposed to like, it just seemed it was a weird. Well, this is a weird one to me. They're actually doing, I think, the exact same thing they did with Cora Jade, uh, which is that Cora and Roxanne both, when they started out, just based on their their stature, based on uh, being younger. Like, I think that they are very good in the ring. They're very likable, but they don't have gravitas to mm. where people would, you know, where they could command attention when they enter yeah. a room. And Cora's heel turn, that worked out very well for Cora. Yeah. So I think that with Roxanne, I think they're trying the same thing because it's going to make her seem more mature. It's going to make her seem more intense. And that way you put her in front of an audience. It is not like, oh, we're so happy for our girl. It's like she's going to command their attention. Like, I think, I yeah. think this is going to work out in the long run. It's just, we're in the process of getting there. And as Lisha is saying, like, yeah, there's a more violent Roxanne. You're going to take that seriously, you know, which is why I think she's got a, it's kind of weird. I think she needs to move on from the prodigy branding a little mm -hmm. bit and figure out like, who's her character now and what do they stand for? Yeah. I, I, I like that. I think that that's actually a good point because you can't just be angry, Roxanne. You got to be like, because Cora J definitely has a character she plays yeah. where I can like go, oh, this is who she is. I get it. Where with Roxanne, it's just, I'm, I'm super frustrated. Yeah. Um, and you're too lovable for me to boo you if you, <laughs> if and that's, that's the all. character. And that's what we're seeing. It's, it's this attitude of saying, I'm not waiting around for my opportunity again. I'm going to make my opportunity and take what's mine. 
Uh, well, Ricky says, I, I love my girl, Roxanne. She in this crazy side, Roxanne. Uh, says, I love it. Majestic Marie says, I love her. Um, and then, uh, of course, as mentioned, Alicia is saying, I'm liking this more violent Roxanne. Uh, it's just, but that's the point. We all like it. That's that's my thing is we like her. She's, she, I, Glenn, I feel like it's so hard to get people to love you. Like if you've got someone who's so lovable, lean into it. Let them be lovable. Yeah. Um, but I guess if you're on the main roster, you've got to be adaptable. And so this is probably them saying, hey, we, you got to figure out how to be this role too. Because sometimes you don't get to be the plucky underdog. Sometimes you've got to do different things. Um, yeah. uh, Crucifino had a match against Dijak because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, Glenn. And <laughs> that means he's got to deal with some Dijak justice. Uh, Luca did pretty good, you know, but eventually loses to Dijak. Post-match is where things get interesting, though, uh, as a newly free Joe Gacy attacks Dijak and later, Tony D says he wants to talk to somebody. Uh, hiding behind the camera, Joe Gacy attacks Dijak again. My question to you, Glenn, this is the most important question we're going to ask tonight. Was Joe Gacy recently freed, or did he break <laughs> free a while ago and just hasn't changed his clothes? <laughs> uh, I mean, I know I thought he was recently freed, and I'd be like, man, he must really want some water and to use the bathroom. Um, <laughs> but no, first off, the lawyer you know, even though he got killed, um, he can wrestle. Yeah. Like, and I look forward to him bringing a suit against Dijak for, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Um, yeah. but no, I think this was good with Gacy. Um, this asylum match next week's going to be fun. Do you think this is going to end with them in a tag team? Cause I could kind of see that. I could see them actually being maybe not the ones to take it off the wolf dogs, but they're the step after that. I 100% believe that they're going to be a tag team and I'm going to yeah. love it. I'm going to love this weird, crazy, these, this is going to be very like the Punisher and I don't know, some other crazy person. Oh, team Batman and the Joker teamed up, you know? Well, yeah, I don't know if I, yeah, that's, I guess that's probably close enough. Uh, I, I'm trying to imagine who Gacy, Gacy is the Joker here, but I, yes. I feel like the Joker's <laughs> smarter than Gacy. <laughs> It'd be funny if Gacy was Batman in this situation. Yeah. Batman's kind of a nut too, when you think about it. And which I mean, is what Dijak is, right? Yeah, they're, they're both, they're both very nuts. Well, Baby Ice agrees with you. Uh, Batman and Joker teaming up. Uh, I just, I, yeah. I like the idea of Dijak as the Punisher. I guess I just see him as a Punisher. Um, character, but either way, like I said, I, I Sammy Diaz says that sounds interesting. Either way, I just I feel like someone needs to bring justice to that parking lot, and there's only one team that can do it. I think that's I think that's Dijak and Joe Gacy. Actually, that would be amazing if they're just like standing on top of the building. Remember how like when Apollo was a vigilante for a week, yeah, and he was going out and getting breakfast. Like they should just be standing on the rooftop of the parking lot to swoop down whenever injustice strikes. The how great, yeah, that'd be great. You'd have like Gallus, like maybe uh, Joe, Joe Coffee is like, okay, we're gonna go jump Ridge Hall in a little bit. Okay, stay here, stay here. And then out of nowhere, Die Jack and Joe Gacy just jump them and beat the crap out of him and says, This parking lot is safe with us on the job or whatever. And like anyone just have different people who like look like they're about to jump somebody, and then these two come out of nowhere and blind sign them and just wreck them before they can do anything negative or, or a bad or attack anybody. Yeah. Uh, we'll I think see. that could be fun. Well, speaking of fun pairings, you want to talk about Nira Valkyria and Tatum Paxley tonight? Yeah, that was a, okay. So something happens after this and we're, we're going to oh, have yeah, our please. opinions on this big time, but, uh, Lyra Valkyria says, Hey, you, you did what you said. I'm going to, uh, like I promised, I'm going to give you a surprise and we're going to take on the Kabuki warriors at roadblock. Uh, Glenn, I think this leads even more credence to my theory that Lyra Valkyria has been on all the Tatum Paxley shenanigans from the very beginning, and this is her long game to be draped in gold. Do, do Tatum and Lyra break up next week, setting up a match for Stand and Deliver? I hope they win the titles. I I, see that's together. not going to happen. I, I will win. bet a I significant amount of money they are not winning. Unless there is a freak accident, and I hope and pray there is not, there is no way they are winning those titles from uh, Asuka and Kari Sane. Um, Alicia A says, this, that's the exact opposite yes. of what you should do with a stalker. <laughs> good, 
Good point. This is uh, a great story, though, and this has been a great build, and their one-on-one feud, Tatum's going to cut some unhinged promos. If this is Lyra Stand and Deliver match for the championship, I am thrilled with that. Well, then let me ask you this. Who's the bad guy? Because Tatum Paxley has been pretty much as sweet. She's done what she's been asked. She's really kind of followed the rules. She's kind of lovable. Lyra Valkyria is kind of using her at this point I know. in a lot of ways. This she's- is why it's great. It's like single white female. So it's it is Lyra the bad guy in this situation? Who's to say? I, th- I think so. I wow. think Tatum Paxley's been a sweetheart. <laughs> Tatum's done nothing wrong. Quote Jack Farmer. Tatum has done nothing wrong. Uh, but listen, <laughs> let me let me let me add to this though. Uh, I think they should win. I think they should win the titles. One because the story is great and it will drag this the story out a little bit longer. But two. There's so many talented women's wrestlers in NXT. We keep talking about them needing more opportunities, like secondary titles and things. Bring the tag team titles to NXT. Like, they never like, should have gotten rid of the NXT women's tag team titles. I, I think agree. NXT needs them more than anyone. The main roster doesn't feel like it has the 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 support as far as the number of teams go. NXT absolutely does. Bring them to NXT. Let them flourish. Let all the people who can use them have them. I think this would be a great way to get them there and drag out this little uh, Tatum, Paxi, Lyra, Valkyria situation even longer. Okay, so they're going to lose next week, but I think the week after is where Tatum overhears Lyra saying something and then snaps. I believe in Tatum, Paxley. I think she's going to make this happen. She's great. We'll see what happens. So you think going into WrestleMania... Tatum Paxley yes. and Lyra Valkyria are your women's tag team champion. Yep. Because uh, here's my here's my here's my counter. Who is fighting for the women's tag team titles at WrestleMania if the Kabuki Warriors still have them? Zoe Stark and Shayna Baszler. You think? Or maybe it's like a, a, one of those four way matches. I know Piper's out, but maybe Chelsea gets a new partner. Because that's, I mean, honestly, and that's why I hope they do it in Mania, not on SmackDown. It would be a good way to get six more women or four more women on the card to make it like a four-way tag match. It might happen. It might yeah. happen. Uh, beer money or it could be Jaden. Yeah, it could be Jaden. Jaden Bianca. Bianca. Although Bianca's been talking so much about her WrestleMania streak. Bianca has. That's where I think yeah. Jade could be the one to break that. It's not like we're not talking about an Undertaker long streak here, but it's still Bianca's streak is impressive. It is pretty impressive. And right now, let's be honest, Jade is just us fantasy booking. There's been no yeah. indication that those two are going to have any type of connection. You don't have you don't have Jade not be on WrestleMania. Why not? She hasn't she's had she's been on one show so far. Because I mean, they need more women's matches. They need more like like anchor women's matches, and that's an anchor women's match. So we'll see. I don't know. I mean, okay. Um, so my, I mean, my prediction: the four women's matches on Mania. I think we got Rhea and Becky. We've got Io and Bailey. We've got Jade versus Bianca, and then I think we have the Kabuki Warriors versus three other women's tag teams. I wish there were those more. Three, who are those three? Though is it gonna? It's gonna be Stark and and Baszler. Stark and Baszler. Chelsea plus a new partner. Maybe. I mean, I hate to say it. Maybe Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany Stratton and Chelsea? I'm just trying to think. Because Tiffany, look, coming out of Australia, Tiffany Stratton seems like one of the biggest female stars in WWE right now. One of the biggest stars, period. So who would you pair her with? I'd pair her with Chelsea because the character work would be good. I wouldn't put her in a tag team. I think she's she's a star. I would. I think she's a star too, but what'd she do with Mania? Oh, and Chance and Carter. Chance. I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, wait, wait, Jack. There, what's, what's the biggest heel move you could do with Tiffany Stratton for Mania? Be like, add her to Bianca versus Jade. <laughs> Make it a triple threat. Like, what's the biggest heel point, move you could do for her? I think at this point where Tiffany is, with how stacked this card is, Tiffany Stratton is a... And I love Tiffany Stratton. I think she's going to be an absolute superstar. I think I think it's a backstage segment. It's okay. her best bet. Uh, is her is her because it's we're 40 days away like it's not like you're going to get a big heated up build for her at this point uh going into yeah i know okay okay. um 
And the the only like the big names that are like kind of rocking and rolling right now are like Nia Jax. Like so, yeah. you're not going to do Nia Jax versus Tiffany Stratton. Uh, no. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I, I your don't... point. You could do Jade versus Nia. Then you could do Bianca versus Tiffany. That could be fun. Be good. I could... Uh, there was something that happened backstage though with Lyra and Tatum. They're looking at this uh, at the Kabuki Warriors video, which again. I love that they showed that video to remind us all who the Kabuki great. Warriors are. If we only watch NXT, very smart move. Um, and what they did in NXT, not just that, oh, they're these other people, but by the way, they've been successful in NXT as well. But then we get uh, Jada Parker uh, talking some smack. We get Ariana Grace talking some smack. Uh, we also had Gigi Dolan and Jada Parker yeah. talking smack. That leads to Jada versus Gigi and uh ariana grace comes out to try to stop the violence gets headbutted but then it costs Gigi dole in the match lots of lots of big stuff here uh, a lot of different people involved and first off we'll start at the, in my opinion the top jada parker jada parker has to be one of the fastest rising stars in nxt i feel like she's already outgrown otm no disrespect to OTM, oh yeah but i feel like she's already outgrown them i feel like she kind of is eating everybody's lunch in every scene she's in i feel like she dominates everything she's doing jada parker might be a women's championship problem very fast yeah um, no, she's great and i think this segment uh this match ma'am gg gg's starting to get that fifth year senior feeling yeah i know yeah. she's done some stuff on main event but i feel like she needs to get called up but i don't know this is where it's tough because on the main roster especially in mania season after mania hopefully there will be a good storyline waiting for her on the main roster yeah she needs to find a groove um and i'm i'm bummed because it looks like it's going to be at the expense of uh ariana grace who i said on twitter and i'll, I'll say it here her character work can't be overstated she's it's she is phenomenal. so good. It's it, this is the most interesting character as far as like this is a very off like well, it's a wild character. I think if you pitched me this character, I'd say that sounds dumb, but she's knocking it out of the oh, park. It's phenomenal. I hope it translates it's, to the main it's, roster because in NXT it's crushing it right now. It's it's so good. Every scene she's in, every line she has, like it's not only is it entertaining, but it's believe like it's her character it believes like we can all be champions, you know, and like it's only like fighting is only normal until we change it. Like you <laughs> believe that she feels that way. It's so ridiculous, but she acts it out in such a believable way. Ariana Grace is God. We, we talk about how stacked WrestleMania was already, but like Ariana Grace, Jada Parker is just a net, like two other people who I feel like, geez, they are just, monster talented it, there's so much going on right now in nxt and so many people that i don't want to say have been there too long but should have been called up a while ago that i think that level up is going to become a more important show towards mm -hmm. the actual development especially when we talk about going to the cw because i think they're going to keep slowing the roll of these call-ups like level up is going to become the true developmental uh wwe show but um Let's talk, though, about uh, Tatum and Lyra, though, that they were interrupted by Ridge Holland, which if you couldn't dislike Ridge Holland anymore or think they've done a worse job with him, he came out there, talked to the crowd, and thank God he was uh, interrupted by Sean Spears, who came out and hit him with the chair. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about this because, again, uh, by the way, real quick, I, wanna, I, I do want to circle back here real quick with yeah, that women's sure. match. Who's the bad guy in the Jada, Jada Parker, Gigi Dolan, uh, Ariana Grace, of all these people, just tell me, which one am I supposed to not like? Well, no, but I think OTM, though, is like Stone Cold, like it's anti-hero rather than bad guys, more like badass. You know, like somebody who's just really cool, who gives zero Fs and is just there to, to do their thing. Gigi, it's... See, I was going to say, maybe Gigi ends up back with JC, and we've got a new toxic attraction but it's so weird that that breakup happened gg was like ultra face like cutting these really heartfelt promos that were great and now it's like i think gg's still a baby face but unfortunately because of that like they've just had nothing to do with her but she still comes out to the ring 
doing a similar entrance to when she was here. It's very confusing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. As I'm watching this, I feel like I'm supposed to like everybody. I don't know which one I'm sure. supposed to to, <laughs> to not Jack, like. That's the ultimate Jack Farmer take on something, which is like, yeah. I just like everybody. I, I can't really against to have these fun. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like Ariana Grace, is because she's like, we're all champions. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Rich Holland, they again, and Rich Holland, Sean, Rich Holland cuts off the women's champion so pissed about in this. this in this like really heartfelt great moment and then gets leveled by Sean Spears. I'm going to ask you yet again, who was the bad guy? Cause I felt like Rich, Rich Holland. Holland deserved to get hit by a chair. I was so angry because Tatum and Lyra are doing a magical storyline right now. I could just yeah. wa- let's bring, get them in an episode of ride along. I want to see what that's like. Um, but no, I was so pissed at Rich Holland coming out there i was like this is insulting this is terrible like why do i care about this the storylines never worked and, and then sean spears came out and hit him with the chair i was like all is forgiven yeah yeah it's like wh- why am i cheering for the guy who shows up at bernie dc saying as stand and deliver the jack farmer participation trophy battle royal uh by the way it's it's you it's an elimination style and the last person Standing is the only one that does not get a trophy. All the <laughs> participants get trophies. Um, but yeah, Rich Hall, like it's funny because they they were clearly trying to build him up as a guy we were supposed to sympathize with. And as as Alicia says, Ridge Holland is the heel. Yeah. Uh, I just very interesting to me that like I, I was cheering for Sean Spears uh hitting him for what he did to them. And I, I I'm hoping that's in and in, in, phenomenal surprise i want to i want to give sean spears his flowers for a minute because i felt this way obviously back in the 10 days uh, i felt this way in AEW. i feel like he is we talk about underutilized wrestlers we talk about under you know appreciated wrestlers i have always felt sean spears is the 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 picture of that when i think of underutilized or under under underappreciated i think is a better term uh, in AEW, I always used to say that if wrestling had a best supporting actor award, it would go to Sean Spears. Mm. Um, I feel like he's someone that every time he works with people, they always look like a million bucks and it's not just, yeah. he sell, you know, sells well or whatever it is. It's, it's literally like for some reason he just makes people look great. And I feel like this is such a incredible signing underrated signing for NXT. I think from a, his ability to train wrestlers is great. His experience is great. And Sean Spears, one of the most underrated entrance music guys of all mm. time, I think. Uh, what, what, what do you, where do you put Sean Spears in your uh, appreciation list? I like him a lot. I think he was a lot of fun in NXT, but he was one of those f- great fun characters that can really wrestle. I think in AEW, there was a ton of potential. And then just never quite broke through i mean aew if you look at the original signings and apparently uh per fightful he has to be released early from his aew deal um you know maybe half maybe 40 percent of the original aew signings are still there so i mean look everything's a work in progress you know um we uh, we move on to Lexus King versus Von Wagner. Uh, Lexus King, I think, one of the the most hateable people in pro wrestling in the best possible way. That's his gimmick. Um, so, Glenn, I got to ask you. We had two wrestlers. One of them had a manager on the outside get involved and help his client get the win. Uh, and then afterwards, the uh, the guy who cheated to win got beat up by the loser and his manager got taken out as he took on both of them at the same time. Which one of these guys is the bad guy? Lexus King. I, on paper, I say, I get that. But if, when I walk through it, one of them has a manager on the outside (laughs) cheating to help his client get a win. I feel like, is that not the, is that not the bad guy thing to do? I feel like Lexus King was robbed. It's a wacky world, man. <laughs> well, uh, Sol Ruka. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Someone's coming back, uh, it seems. Uh, there's a beach yes. vignette. Uh, who do you think it is? Well, originally I was like, oh, it's Trick Williams. He's recuperating on the beach because he's going to show up next week. Uh, but yeah, Sol Ruka seems to be the uh, conventional wisdom. Um, 
it's uh yeah it's it's it seems like it's gonna be be her uh elvis saying Ta- uh, tama though thinks that mm. it's, it's gonna be uh who, who it's gonna be uh be. trick possibly come back maybe the creed brothers if you remember when they took some time off they sent some video of themselves on beaches uh mm. that was a deep cut that no one's gonna get but whatever it's fun um maybe maybe no never mind because you know the rock uh the movie beaches makes the rock cry so maybe it's an homage to the film beaches and the rock is going to show up on NXT. Well, I was going to, I was going to say, uh, you know, we all like beaches, but we hate people who ruin them. So with that big word on there, who's the bad guy is it the water or is it the, no, um, <laughs> KOD saying, what if it's Stevie Turner? That oh like man. Stevie I miss Turner's. Stevie Turner. What's, I love Stevie Turner. What is up with what, like, or what's not going on with Stevie Turner? Explain that to me. To me, Stevie Turner is talented, has the look, wrestles well, has a character that stands out, is different, and plugs is plug and play with today's world. I feel like yeah. she's. In fact, here's the deal: we know that and people that are in NXT watch this show because we're one of the few that covers NXT. Uh, d- my DMs are open. I I, I will keep it. You know, I w- I won't even tell anyone. I won't even tell Jack. I just need to know why hasn't Stevie Turner gotten to do more in nxt for my own peace of mind because i wonder this every tuesday you know i, I hopefully she gets some time because she's she's, Hope so. she's great um no am dar gets jumped uh before his match with an interview uh and he talks about how he doesn't care which one he's going to face uh, of no catch quarter crew no quarter catch crew turns out to be turns out to be dempsey uh no quarter catch crew cheats to win and beats Noam Dar. I've said before, I love these matches. I love heritage cup matches. I, I love, this is my kind of pro wrestling match. Um, I know some people, they're not as into it. This was absolutely my favorite kind of match. Uh, but again, I have to ask you, Glenn, who's the bad guy here. I feel like we're not supposed to like Noam Dar and metaphor, but they got absolutely cheated here. Uh, Dylan Matthews don't know M Dar was robbed here. I absolutely agree. Uh, who am I supposed to be booing here? I feel like both of them were the bad guys. This is really one of those tests of what kind of wrestling fan are you? Do you like characters or do you like technical wrestling? No M Dar has both, but metaphor are much more fun characters in my mind than the no quarter catch crew. Hot take. <laughs> I look at these heritage cup matches. Like I'm just like, just somebody I'm going to go use the bathroom. Tell me in 15 minutes, you know, when we're in the last round, then I'm going to pay attention. I love these matches. I absolutely, I absolutely love these. They're they're I I like good old, uh, wrestling. And I love, for me, I like the fact that there's a lot of, uh, psychology to it and how they like, an early win for one person. How does that play into later and, and things like that? I, I actually really enjoy it. Uh, Ricky says it's 50, 50 here. Who is baby face and who's heel. That means there isn't one. <laughs> you know, I don't think you can be 50, 50. Uh, I would say like, imagine going to a, a football game and be like, I'm 50, 50 for which team I want to win. Well, that means you're not, you're not really cheering. I, I kind of felt though. that way about the Super Bowl this year. Oh, I definitely wanted the chiefs to win. Mm. Um, I'm a Seahawks fan, so I don't want to see the 49ers win anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. By the way, shout out to Elvis from Brazil. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate nice. you. Um, we get to the end of the show. And, uh, well, at the beginning, Ilya Dragunov wants to face Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes with his uh, security says, not until I get a contract. Contract is ready to go. But Tony D shows up. And in one of the greatest moments in NXT history, Glenn, that's right. I'm going to. I'll, I'll be a prisoner of the moment. I'll say it. Tony D snaps his fingers and all the security guys walk away. Love and that. he takes over this segment. Walk me through it, Glenn. It was so good because he was out there and Carmelo has been doing his heel thing. He wants that title. He wants that championship. Dragging off his game to give him that match. But Tony D is out there and Carmelo says, hey, these are my security guys. You know, you want to touch me? You got to go through them. Tony D reminds him who calls the shot snaps his figures security leaves this is back to tony d slipping the ref uh, some money saying get yourself something nice um this was beautiful and i love that even with carmelo he's like 
no disrespect, but you've been talking about this championship thing for like a year. Like, yeah. And yeah. he essentially said, Carmelo's demanding this. I want to earn it. So Dragon off, here's my proposal to you with all due respect. I face this guy next week. I win. I get a match. Let's stand and deliver. Beautiful. That's, and you know, throughout the show, I've been saying who's the good guy, who's the bad guy. That's what I love about Tony D is he's showing he's us, we're guy. still supposed to like him. He's, he's, uh, he's saying, look, I'm going to earn this match. So he's not being like, I'm just demanding what I want. He's, he's going to earn it. So we still like him. Uh, and I want him to win the title. I want yeah. him to do this. I want him to, I'm a Carmelo Hayes guy. I definitely feel like, Again, I talked about earlier as a fan. It's always it's good to watch as a fan and not get too caught up into the who should win, what booking looks like. But I feel like, Glenn, you're going to agree with me here. Perfectly set up to do uh, Tony D moves on to face Dragunov, which leaves Trick versus Carmelo at Stand and Deliver. And then I think at Stand and Deliver, Tony D wins, which then we get Obafemi versus Dragunov down the road. I think that's how that plays out. Um, but either way, I, that's how I think it's all going to go. And I love it. I, I love it. If that is how it goes, I'm absolutely thrilled. If Tony D'Angelo is NXT champion at the end of WrestleMania weekend, I mean, what more can I ask for? He's He's been one of the most entertaining characters for a long time on that show. Even when he was injured, he was one of the most entertaining characters on that show. Uh, he's been able to do the vignette only thing. He's been able to have the matches. Uh, I think it's his time. Uh, but man, uh, like I said, to me as a fan, when you're watching that moment of him snapping his fingers and the, the security walking away, just as a fan, like I, I always try to judge things. Like, how did I feel in that moment? What was the feeling in my heart when that happened? And yeah, man, that was one of those like, Oh, <laughs> like, no, I got, so I got good. Um, and but, let me uh, tell yeah. you this podcast from day one was on board with Tony D. We, you know what? We have been Tony D supporters, um, especially since uh, he didn't turn on Stax, who's the real mastermind of the group. Uh, um, I love this. I thought this was a great show. Lots of storytelling. We got some good matches in there as well. I, we got great wrestling. We got great yeah. stories. We got great videos. We got great promos. Stages set for down the line. I think this was executed perfectly. I give it a 10 out of 10. Everyone in the chat, let me know your overall thoughts. But Glenn, what were yours? And uh, where can the world find you online? Tonight was everything I love about NXT. It was so good. Um, man, like, just what a surprise with Sean Spears. What yeah. a surprise. Who saw that coming? I think, I think even when we made our oddball, like, funny guesses of who it was. Yeah. Like, that wasn't even people's mind. They'd be like, oh, it's Sean Spears. It's, you know, it's it's weird because I knew he stepped away from AEW. But for some reason, the idea of him signing with WWE again just never clicked. You know what I mean? It never is never like an idea like, oh, what if he goes back to WWE? I don't know. Just somehow them keeping this a secret and then making it happen and then making it feel like a big moment I thought was was incredible. Um, we're getting 7.5 ratings out of the, um, on the chat here, but Glenn, where can the world find you online? Where they can, yeah. where can they see all your other stuff? Matt Glenn Rubenstein, check me out. Uh, follow this guy over there at real Jack farmer. Yeah. You can follow me at real Jack farmer across Not all fake Jack farmers, media. only the real nope. ones. I thought I was so clever when I put real in front of my name there. I was like, man, no one's going to do this. I'm so cool. And then now it's like, um, but I'm stuck with it. Uh, you could check out. Uh, I did commentary for a show here recently, uh, Prestige Wrestling, where we had some incredible matches. I mean, we call it an indie show, but I mean, we had um, Mustafa Ali versus Mike mm. Bailey. We had Jordan nice. Grace on the show versus oh. Sandra Moon. We had Tiger Mask there. We had the Motor City Machine Guns there. Uh, we had Kushida was there. Like just so many big names. It's available on uh, independentwrestling.tv now. You can go check that out and hear me chatting. Uh, I'm also going to be doing commentary for Santino Bros on March 16th, Last Man Standing. And guess what? It's going to be a Last Man Standing match. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be fun. Nice. Check that out. Uh, make sure to follow at Wrestling Inc. for all your wrestling news. And make sure to check us out tomorrow after AEW Dynamite for the AEW Dynamite after show. That does it for us. And at this time, Glenn, I'm going to hit the end stream.